if you L O V E the O C E A N. Love the ocean. You got S A V E the O C E A N. Save the ocean. We're gonna save the ocean, y'all. Gonna stop now. Yay! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Playing Ivy. My name is Ivy, and today is our third video of Cephalopod Week. So, if you guys didn't know, this week is Cephalopod Week, celebrating the amazing family of octopuses, cuttlefish, squids, and chambered nautiluses. Some of my favorite animals in the entire world. This week, I've been doing some octopus related content just specifically because octopuses are my favorite animal and it just inspires me to create. And something I want to inspire you guys to do today is to save the ocean. Which is why I wore my green squad shirt because we're going green here. And especially because starting next week, I believe. Wait. When does it start? There we go. Because starting a little less than a week from now is Plastic Free July. So Plastic Free July is basically committing to using less plastics during the entire month of July, which makes a big impact for our oceans. If you guys didn't know, one of the biggest problems with our oceans today is plastic pollution. Basically, by reducing the amount of plastics that you use in your life, you're going to help the ocean immensely because that means that many of the animals that live in the ocean will not come in contact with those different plastics and won't confuse it for food or shelter or work getting entangled in those different types of things. I participated in Plastic Free July via joining the National Aquarium team. If you're interested in joining, I will have a link down below so you guys can learn more about the challenge and also join the team so we can help save the ocean. But if you guys are already leading a fairly plastic free lifestyle or you just want to learn about different avenues that you can take to help save the ocean, just keep watching this video and we're going to learn about eight different ways to help save the ocean. Let's start off with this right off the bat. Number one, go plastic free. Because plastic, like I said, is one of the biggest problems that the ocean is having today because we are using so many plastics that are ending up in the ocean and that's not good because while plastic can be recycled, it can never be recycled to the quality it was at the beginning. So here's what I mean. There are other things that we recycle like paper, metal, glass. Those are things that we recycle as well, but those things can be more easily recycled because they are not man-made materials like plastic. Paper comes from trees, glass comes from sand, and Metal can be made out of natural materials as well. So all three of those things come from natural materials. So they don't really degrade over time. They just get reused and returned into basically their original state or something close to it. But plastic is man-made. And so plastic deteriorates more over time. So like the quality of this plastic bottle will never be the same as it is now. It Over time, it will just deteriorate more and more and more. But luckily, this bottle is made up to 30% from plants so there's something there and while it is recyclable it will never be as recyclable as glass metal or paper so go as plastic free as possible if you have the option buy things that come in materials that are easily recyclable buy things that are either packaged in paper glass or metal and by reducing the amount of plastic in your life you're going to immensely be helping the ocean because like I said already plastic is one of the main things that is affecting our oceans today and to go behind that Number two is to use reusable items. Basically, by reusing items, you're making less trash in general because you're not throwing something away after one use, like that water bottle, you're using something multiple times, like a reusable water bottle. If you guys wanna learn more about the three top reusables that I recommend you getting, then don't forget to check out the video that will have linked in the end of this video where I talk about three easy things you can do to help the planet. Using a reusable water bottle is something really easy to start off with, but using any reusable items is something really awesome that you can do because you're making less trash, which in turn makes less plastic, which in turn helps protect the ocean. Boom! Number three also directly relates to this. You can either start or join a beach or a neighborhood cleanup. Something that we don't talk about a lot is the fact that all the waterways we have up in our land will eventually make it out to the ocean. And so, by picking up any trash here on land and making sure that it's put in the proper container, making sure it's properly recycled, making sure it probably ends up in like something like a landfill, it's going to help the ocean a lot because even the storm drains that we have up here on land, they will eventually lead out to the ocean. And so, if somebody washes down the storm drain, there's a very good chance that it could end up in the ocean. So cleaning up your neighborhood is something you can do right now that can help out the ocean. And you don't have to do it alone. Back when I was in high school, we did a cleanup just in our area and we picked up like four trash bags worth of trash and also found two tires that we found hidden in the woods. 
and by throwing those away that's a lot of trash that won't end up in a storm drain but also when you go directly to the beach you're making sure you're at the front lines and you're making sure that the, any trash that ends up on the beach will not get washed out directly into the ocean where it can harm an animal like an octopus or any of your favorite ocean animals like sea turtles, sharks, any other fish, just to name a few. So by joining a cleanup or starting your own cleanup, you're doing a lot that can help out the ocean. One of my favorite organizations in fact is For Ocean, which is an organization that every single time you buy a bracelet, that will help pull out another pound of trash out of the ocean. And I bought one of the bracelets, it's really awesome, and it's just a great cause to support. If you guys are interested in For Ocean, I promise this video is not sponsored by them. I will have a link to their website just linked down below because I just think they're an awesome institution to support in general. Now these next two options don't directly deal with plastic pollution, but they deal with ocean acidification, which is another problem that's plaguing our oceans today. If you guys didn't know, ocean acidification is basically the act of the ocean getting more acidic. When we use things like electricity or our cars or things like that, we're producing a gas called carbon dioxide. It's something that we naturally exhale and it's a natural occurring thing that a lot of plants will use to make their own food and produce oxygen which we breathe. So carbon dioxide is normal in normal quantities. It helps the circle of life continue. But when we're using things like cars and electricity, that can make more carbon dioxide and any excess carbon dioxide that we make here on land will end up in the ocean because the ocean is the world's largest carbon sink. Which basically means that the ocean is absorbing all the carbon dioxide that we make here on land. And by absorbing that carbon dioxide, it starts a process that makes the ocean more to sick. It's like adding more lemon juice to lemonade. It makes it more sour, and by making it more sour, that's not something you want to drink. Now, if you're making the ocean more acidic, that's not something that a fish or any other animal wants to live in. And so they don't want to live in that space anymore, and we don't want to be the cause of that. So by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide you make, aka reducing your carbon footprint, you're going to make a big impact on our oceans. So here are two ways to do that. Number one is to use public transportation when possible. This is important because by a ton of people using one vehicle to get to a certain place, that means that the same amount of people won't be using their individual cars or something like that to make as much carbon dioxide. So like one bus makes less carbon dioxide than 20 cars. Those 20 individuals who are taking the bus use their 20 cars, they will be making way more carbon dioxide than they would be taking the bus. Something that I do is that I take the metro to work because it drops me off right where I need to be, and the great thing is that it produces less carbon dioxide as well. So if you have access to public transportation in your area, highly suggest using it, or even you can just use a carpooling service like Uber or Lyft because that car is being used to make multiple trips for multiple people instead of each of those individuals using their own vehicle. And so that is also helping the environment because you're making less carbon dioxide than you would if all of you took your own vehicles. And then the other thing you can do is to eat as local as possible. Believe it or not, our food travels a really far way to get to us. For example, I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and sometimes the food that I eat here, it comes from a distance that's almost like driving from here to Colorado. That's a lot of carbon dioxide that's being put into our atmosphere because of that trip. And so by buying options that are more locally sourced, you're going to be reducing the amount of carbon dioxide that is made. So instead of buying things that are like coming from like California, Maine, Florida, even halfway across the world like in Africa or in Europe. You can buy options that are locally sourced here. For example, eat, getting your food from a farmer's market because those are local farmers who are bringing their produce directly to you and sometimes they even use eco-friendly resources to get their food to you. And you also know that that food is more likely to be organic than anything that you could buy in a grocery store so it may be better for your health in the long run. For example, my mom has a medical problem where she should not be eating things that have come in contact with pesticides. So we try to buy as organic as possible for her health. And so that may help you too in the long run. And if you do not have access to the farmer's market, that's totally fine. It's not your fault. Farmer's markets are not easily accessible to everyone. Something you can just do at the grocery store is look at where your food is coming from. So I have a coworker who only buys things that are in a state that is nearest to us. So we live in Maryland. So she's only buying food that comes from places like Delaware, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, 
states that are really really close to us instead of buying things that may have come from like California or Washington that are on the other side of the country. That means that less carbon dioxide was produced in order to get the food to us, which makes a big impact on our oceans. Now this next tip is something that you can implement when you go on vacation this summer. I know a lot of us are heading to the beach this summer, very tropical areas, places where we don't usually go, which is a lot of fun, but while we're there, we need to be very conscious of the purchases that we make. For example, when you go to gift shops and you see things like coral pieces or any other animal products, be conscious of what you are purchasing. For example, that coral piece should not be in a gift shop, it should be in the ocean. Because coral is a habitat that only covers less than 1% of the ocean floor, but it is a habitat to 25% of the animals in the ocean, including the octopus, which is one of my favorites. And maybe one of your favorite animals in the ocean lives there as well. So it's really, really important that we leave as much coral in the ocean as possible and not use it just so we can have it like lying around in our office. So if you see products like that or any other animal products that may look suspicious to you in a seaside shop or something like that, it's best not to buy it because we don't want to encourage people to keep taking stuff out of the ocean when it needs to stay there. By using your purchasing power to not purchase the item, you're having a huge influence over things that are being sold because if there's no market for these things, then there's no reason to get them out of the ocean anymore. And my final tip for you guys in order to save the ocean is to share what you know. A lot of people don't know about little things they can do to help protect the ocean, protect the planet, because we don't, know, we don't talk about them a lot. Like, I didn't hear about half of these options until I started going to school and learning more about environmental science. But I've been taking environmental science classes since I was in high school, and therefore, not a lot of people know about the options that I know about because they haven't had the same educational background that I had. Which is totally fine, but these are not things that should be kept to one group. They should be shared with everyone. So share what you know with other people on social media, by word of mouth. Just get the word out there that there are these options out there that will make a big impact on our planet. And that will help the plant, the ocean, and generally us. And you can start by sharing this video with everybody that you know on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter. Just share it. Just share any resources that you've learned about or any resources that you use in order to help make an impact on the planet. So this video is not something you should keep to yourself. If this video has been very helpful to you, share it with other people. Share it on your social media just so people can learn more about the simple little actions that we can take in order to make a Im big impact on our oceans and our planet in general. If this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to give it a like and comment down below what you've learned from this video, if you learned anything from this video, and share some other tips that you may have that may help other people who have not heard a lot of this information before. And I hope to do more of this eco-friendly content in the future, so also tell me a comment down below if this is something you would like to see more of in the future. And that is going to be a wrap on video three of cephalopod week there's a lot of more fun stuff coming this week that deals more creativity so you will have two more videos this week on wednesday and thursday and then there will be a bonus video on friday so don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the post notifications so you know why i post these videos and so you officially become part of the ivy league and until next time this has been ivy thank you for watching hopefully i see you in my next video bye